Greetings, salutations, it's me, James, your BA Sensei, back with another Power Query tutorial! In today's video, we are going to do some fancy conditional lookups. The data set we're going to be looking at is this simple email and full name data set. What we want to do here is we want to look up this email in either the email 1 or email 2 columns. And if the name also matches, then we return the age. Here you can see Henry Buertus over there, and that's quite a simple one. The name matches and the email matches, and we bring back 44. And in the second case, where we cannot find the email match, we just simply do a match on the name. Like, for instance, this guy, John O'Loxon over here. There's no corresponding email, but we can find his name there and we return his age of 20. Enough talking. Let me show you how to do it. All right, so I'm going to pull this into Power Query, but first let's look at what this table is called. This one is called Source Table. This one is called Lookup. Well, I'm going to click on this one and say Data and From Table Range. That opens Power Query. So now I'm just going to open the Advanced Editor. And you can see this is the code we used to basically get that the source table in. But now I'm just going to say comma there. I'm going to bring in the lookup table. I'm going to call it lookup table and just paste the code in there. And the table was called lookup. So this is now going to return the lookup table as well as a second step. There we go. A thing that I like to do, I like to wrap any table that we look up into table buffer to put it in memory so we can do repeated quick lookups. So I'm going to say wrap this in table buffer. So now the lookup table is in memory for easy lookup. All right, let's add a new step. And in this step, I'm going to start at source, go back to source. Yeah, the thing, the original table. And I am going to say table add column. And the column we're going to add is to the source table and we're going to call this column age. And for now, I'm just going to say each and I'm going to say one in there to just return a column with age and a one value in there. So now we're going to expand this a little bit. My first mission is to find all the emails in here and match them to emails in either this one or that one and bring back the results. OK, so we're going to work on this each over there. And to do this, we are going to use a nested let. So I'm going to say let and in and in there, my first argument there, I'm going to declare a table called matches. So all matches I could find. And I'm going to say table let rows. Yes. And I'm basically going to take the lookup table and I'm just going to use a little rocket dash to refer to the, uh, the lookup table. I'm just going to call it LKP, right? And I'm going to take the, the the field from the lookup table, LKP. I'm going to take the email one is equal to my email in my main table over there. And I'm just going to return the matches. So now you have a little table. And it basically, if you look at that, it returns all the matches you can find. Now this is only matching on email one. Now I want to include email two as well. So I'm going to say or lookup email two is equal to email and say, OK. So now you can see in some of these cases, we return two values for that because I could find a match in email one and email two. You can see these have no matches. Some of them have two matches. That's good to know. So now our condition is let's quickly look at one of these cases. If there are two matches, you can see there's two rows in there. Then I need to take the name. This one is Robert Kirby and check, look up the name from this table, from this main one over there. Right. So now we need to enhance this logic over there. Let's just open my advanced query over here. Now, instead of doing the matches, I'm going to say if table row count everything in my matches is more than zero. In other words, I could find a match, then return matches, else return null. Say OK. So now you can see these guys all return matches on email either one or two, and these two have no matches on email one or two. We all need to do something on the name only. Right. 
Let's quickly go back to advanced editor. So now we're just gonna work on this, the matches. So then if we find a match, if we do find a match, we now need to look up the name. So I'm gonna say there, table, select rows, start with my matches, yes. And then we're gonna do a lookup once again, LKP, that's the variable name there with the rocket ash. I'm gonna say the lookup from the lookup table called first name and we're gonna put a space in between we're gonna say lookup last name must be equal to the full name from the main table over there and let's say okay so now you can see we narrow down those specific lookups okay that's pretty excellent that's pretty excellent you might notice this one now has a null from before. It's because there were no matches literally on the name matching that, but we're gonna deal with that one now. Okay, so that's cool. So we've done that now. So let's quickly go back to the advanced editor. What I wanna do now is you can see that I wanna return the age. Now it brings back the age as a list, okay? I don't really want a list, I want it to be um, just a normal field. So I'm going to go back there. I'm going to say age, just return value number zero from the list. Cool. There we go. There's all the matches. Whoa, we got an error over there. Okay. So in this case, what happened with this one? So Tessa Franco, it found Tessa Franco in there. There it is. But the name we're expecting is Tessa Franco. This one is actually called Princey Franco. So couldn't really find a match. So that's giving us an error, right? There was no value in the list. So what you could do, you can use an optional access operator at the end of this thing by just, let's quickly open advanced editor. Just put a question mark there, right? And now this error would now be converted to a null value. There you see, there we go. There's a null value. But we need to find some sort of an alternative way to deal with it when it is an error or a null like that. So I'm going to show you what to do there. So we're going to go to advanced editor. So because of this little question mark, we got an error there because there were no matches. So now you can use a null coalescing operator, which is basically can be seen as double question mark. And what we're going to do there is table select rows. And I am now going to look up a name. So I'm going to start directly from my lookup table. And I'm going to look up in my rocket ash. The exact same thing we have over there. I'm going to turn the exact same thing over there, but just now looking only at the names. Now you see it returned that one. So that's quite a cool little trick. If you look at this double question mark, which is actually a null coalesce coalescing operator, which will return a second value if the first one was a null. And this was the first one, it was a null. And then this one, the double question mark, then returns the alternative to that. All right, that's excellent. But now you can see the two nulls here. The reason why these two are null is because there were no matches found in these emails at all. So if you look at the code, this little block here is only when there was a match found. So all you need to do now is actually just copy this code over there and add that to the null and say, okay, there we go. There's all your matches. All you need to do now is close and load, bring it back to Excel. And there we go. Well, I hope that taught you something new about the power of nested lets. And then also, and using little hacks like the, the question mark, which is the operational access operator. And when that returns a null, you can use a double question mark, which is the null coalescing operator to have an alternative to when the first value is null. It's a pretty cool trick, and I hope it blew your mind. Until we meet again, BA Sensei signing out.